Welcome to the season four of this podcast, and now with a new name, the Chainbreaker Podcast, where faith meets mindset for a transformative journey towards living the full life God has designed for you. I'm your host, Fernanda Longo. I'm a seeker of truth and passionate about destroying belief systems that does not work in the first place. Together, we will peel back the layers of religion and understand the liberated wisdom of scripture that empowers us to transform our minds. And the verse that gives us this mission is Romans 12 too. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So get ready to challenge norms, break free from toxic patterns, and rediscover the joy that is rightfully yours. Together, we will learn, discuss, and uncover the keys to unlocking the full life God intends for each of us. This is more than a podcast. It's a community. It's a sanctuary for those seeking a fresh perspective on faith and mindset. So buckle up for a journey of revelation, growth, and the pursuit of living your life in full alignment with God's extraordinary plan. Welcome to Chainbreaker Podcast, where truth transforms and lives are renewed. Let's begin this journey together. Hello, friends. Are you working on a dream and just thinking about it all the time and trying to get something done to move forward in your life, but you're not making any progress. And if you are, which I know a lot of you are, um, I want to talk to you about a possible reason of why you are not making any progress. And this doesn't necessarily has to do with like a certain goal, but it can be anything. It can, it can very much be a business, a career goal or, um, health goal like a weight loss or something like that it can be a relationship that you're trying to move forward and it's not making progress let's say in a marriage or in a situation with a family member um it can be money related you're trying to get out of that but you cannot get out of that whatever the dream i'm gonna call it a dream but whatever you are trying to move forward with and you're not making progress this is a quick tip that may uh, work for you, okay? And that may be the reason why you're stuck in the position that you are at. Um, I am saying maybe because there could be a lot of variables and each different person have a different scenario. But this is a reason that I find very common between a lot of the people I talk to and I coach through and a lot of my friends and so forth. So I hope this will help you kind of uh, do a personal assessment and see if that's the situation with you. And the, the very thing that may be holding you back is the reason that you are waiting for something to happen or for somebody to do something. So if you're a Christian, you are familiar with the sentence, wait on the Lord, right? If you are not a Christian and you're listening to this, you may not be familiar with that, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to wait and I'm going to wait for when my time comes, then something is going to happen, right? Um, a lot of the times Christians will say, I'm going to wait in God's timing. And when it's God's timing, I'm that will happen. The thing about is, if you look at the Bible, every single person registered in the Bible that was waiting for a miracle to happen, that was waiting on the Lord, they were never passive on their waiting. They were always proactive. So let me give you an example. Paul had a dream of preaching the gospel in Rome. He was not sitting in Tarsus and waiting for the day that God would supernaturally take him out of there all the way to Rome and put him on a place where he could just woo, preach the gospel to thousands of people without being prosecuted. That's not the case, okay? Okay. So Paul was proactive in moving in that direction, fighting the hardships, giving up a lot of comfort to go and fulfill his dream of preach the gospel in Rome. Okay, and you can look all throughout scripture. Uh, the picture that we have is always that the people are 
proactive working towards whatever they want to achieve, whatever they, the goal they want to achieve. And in this process, they all have failures. They all have circumstances that are not um, ideal. And they keep working and they keep learning and they keep moving forward until a moment that a door opens and they can do whatever they um, are trying to achieve to do. So I want to um, challenge you to look at the places in your life that you are looking for a supernatural change, that you are looking for God to come in and do a miracle in your life, but you may be sitting in the couch doing too much Netflix and chill instead of you moving forward to that dream, taking proactive actions to do the things you need to do to achieve that dream, okay? Because Netflix and chill is not, most likely is not going to take you to know where you want to be, whether you're talking about career, um, health goals, relationship goals, um, money goes, whatever your situation is, Netflix and chill is not going to move you forward to that. Uh, being passive is not going to move you forward to that. You got to take dominion and stand up and do the things that your intuition is leading you to do. Because guess what? Your intuition is the Holy Spirit telling you, go in that direction. You may find something there. Um, so you got to get up. You got to get up and go do something to move towards what you want to, where do you want to get, right? So when we move forward, and I know some of you are going to ask the question, well, what about Abraham when he knew he was going to have a kid and then he went and had a kid with Hagar and that was Ishmael and that was not the plan and it messed up the whole thing. If you're not familiar with the Bible, um, Abraham, very in the Old Testament, the beginning of the Bible, God promised him that he was going to have a, ch a child. He was 100 years old. His wife was 100 years old. They never had a child before. And they, he decided to have a child with um, somebody else. And that child was not the child of the promise. And a year later, his wife ended up getting pregnant and so forth. So you can go and read in the Bible if you're interested. If you are um, familiar with it, I'm sure if you've been in church for just a small period of time, I'm sure you heard that story before. So a lot of people were afraid to move forward and make the mistake that Abraham did. The thing about that is that Abraham made that mistake because he was not connected with God at the time. So scripture tell us that Throughout Abraham's life, there was big periods of his life where he was not connected with the Lord. And when I say connected with God, I'm not necessarily telling you that you have to go to a church. I'm telling you that you, with the exception of people being atheists, all the other religions and beliefs across the globe believe that there is something bigger than ourselves like I didn't create myself I didn't create the world there was something that created the world that I am at right so every other religion on earth have the similar belief that there is a god I call a god there is many different names that other religions want to call but there is a creator um, that is not me or you, right? Except atheists, they, they think they, I don't know what they think. <laughs> don't know, don't care. But anyway, um, so if you happen to be a Christian, if you're listening to this, big chances are that either you are a Christian or you are around Christians. That's how, kind of how you came to to this podcast. But if you are of any faith, like there is a God that you believe in and God is not about keeping a checklist of things that you have to do and cannot do so you can go to heaven when you die. God wants a relationship with you right now where you're at, right now, not just when you die, just right now. So you need to find ways that you can connect with God that works for you. 
Because some people connect with God by going to church. And there are many different churches out there. And you can see the different churches has different types of ceremonies. Because different people connect to God in different ways. I know people who connect to God by walking in nature. I know people who connect to God by listening to music. I, so you need to find a way that you connect to God. And you need to spend time connecting with him so for me i have a very um very um uh, organized morning routine that i wake up a couple hours before my kids wake up and i have that time where i do my meditation i do my prayer i read scripture i spend that time really filling myself with that relationship with god that does not have a It's not like a Bible reading plan. It's not nothing like that because I believe that when we put so many rules, it ends up becoming a checklist versus a intuition of having that relationship. I don't have a checklist to hang out with my husband. I have to do this and I have to do that. I just hang out with him. Okay, I don't have a checklist to hang out with my family, with my friends. I just hang out with them. And I, I believe that God wants to hang out with us that way and not through a checklist so that's what i do and i highly recommend you having developing a practice a spiritual practice where you connect with god in the way that is best for you the way that you can feel god better because like walking in nature is not my thing i lived in uh, the last house we lived in for seven years that was big woods in the back and was our property and for seven years i not once stepped on those woods i didn't even put my foot on there i'm scared to death of snakes i do not like them i hate them if i see them i want them dead and i don't care if you're over the protection of animals i fought with my husband about this so many times because he does not like to kill any animals And I am not killing the snakes. So somebody else had to do it, right? And he does not like to kill animals. But guess what? If the snake is in my property, and it's gone. And I never stepped on those woods. So walking in nature is not my thing. Most likely, I am not going to meet God in nature if I don't even like to walk in nature. I'm going to be freaking out all the time, looking down on my feet if there isn't the snakes there. I'm not going to be relaxed and enjoying that time. So if you love woods, that may be the place that you are going to meet God. You know what I'm saying? So you need to find what works for you and not what works for me, what works for a pastor, you know, what works for a priest, you know, or whoever. You need to find what works for you. But you need to develop a spiritual practice where you are connected with your creator and just spending that time with him so you can get the direction of how you're going to move the next steps towards the things that you feel called to do because all of us feel called to do something and the thing that you feel called to do the desire of your heart is exactly the purpose that your creator gave it to you so you're going to be much more fulfilled when you take those actions instead of doing Netflix and chill every night to take off the stress of the day right but before I go I want to tell you this There is nothing that will guarantee that you're not going to fail ever. And matter of fact, there is a 99.99999% of chance that you are going to fail multiple times before you achieve something. Because failure is a point of view. I am starting to finally starting to get my, my subconscious getting to the reality that failure is just an opportunity to learn and Pat and I work a lot to teach our kids that failure is just part of the process and a lot of times we ask them throughout the day what did you fail on today and we wanted them to feel comfortable failing because a thing that holds us back as humans the most is the fear of failure so we don't do something 
We don't move forward because we are afraid to fail, because we are afraid to be exposed, we are afraid to be vulnerable. And if we just change the way we see failure and actually look at failure as an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to move forward in that journey, we will have a completely different life. Because when we are walking towards something that we feel our heart's desire moving in that direction, so whatever you want to call a goal, a dream, or a restoration of a relationship, or whatever, you're moving forward towards that um, thing, you're going to find failure. And most of people, what they do is they stop and they take a step back and they give up. But when you look at failure as just part of the journey, learning process, you find failure, you say, okay, good. Now I'm just one step closer to to get where I want to get with this. And you learn with this process. Um, One thing that I learned from one of my coaches was to say, I'm glad this is happening because, and then fill it at the blank with the because. What did I gain from this failure? What did I gain from this experience? And then you learn that and you move forward because once again, 99.999% of the people who succeeds very quickly in any area of their life um, without failure, it doesn't last because once they find a hardship, once, once they find an issue, and they will find it because in this life, we are going to have troubles. That's a promise. <laughs> All of us will. When they find it, they can't handle it because they didn't have all that practice. It's just like working out at the gym. I don't go to the gym. If I go to the gym right now and I want to bench press 300 pounds, first of all, I don't even know what is the bench press machine, so that's going to be hard. But second, even if somebody take me to that machine, (laughs) I will not be able to lift it because I never did it once. So, That's why at the gym, we start slowly with lower weights and then we increase and we increase and we increase until one day we're bench pressing 300 pounds. Failure is the same thing. You learn how to deal with it with small failures and then when something big hits you, you have just so, you can handle so much more weight versus a person that succeeds at once really quick and then when they get hit, their muscles are their muscles are weak. They can't handle, and then they fall apart. And that's why you see a lot of Hollywood and a lot of now with the social media, those viral uh, one video wonders. And then all of a sudden they disappear, or they go broke, or they uh, go bankrupt, and they couldn't handle. They didn't have the muscles to handle when hardship came. So you need to look at failure as another day at the gym. I am just growing my muscles. And once again, that can be for anything. It can be for a relationship you have. This was a suck day. And me and this person just, we didn't get along. It was terrible. We had a fight. Okay. I'm working that muscle. How can I fix it? How can we do better next day? Right. Um, Once again, with money, it sucks. I overspend. My credit card is blowed out. Okay, I'm going to do better tomorrow. I'm going to find a way to make a hundred extra dollars and put it towards that credit card. Whatever. We cannot sit here and look back at the failures we had and cry about it and not do anything about it and just hope and pray that the Lord will do something supernatural while we are being passive about the very thing that God made us for. Okay, so I hope that empowers you today. I hope that challenges you today to look at the circumstances that you are, that you want to change, and that you may be reactive and passive about it. And I hope you spend some time with God in whatever way it works for you. Connect with God and ask for a direction on how can I be proactive about this specific circumstance, okay? I love you guys so much, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. (music) 
thank you for listening to this episode. If today's episode set your soul on fire, get ready for an ongoing explosion of inspiration in our email community. I'm dropping bombs of encouragement, unleashing Bible wisdom that liberates souls and empower you to live a beautiful life. This is not just an invitation, it's a culture revolution. Join us in the messy middle of faith and mindset. Head to thechainbreakerpodcast.com and just don't listen, act. Join the revolution at thechainbreakerpodcast.com and let's turn the page to the next chapter of your beautiful journey. And until next time, stay bold, stay unapologetic, and let's keep changing the game together.